media reports were very rife somewhere last week that Coach Chris Hilton's job was on the line. And uh, the Ghana Football Association had made an attempt to sack him following um, performances that were not too aggressive for the association to accept. Uh, but then there was a sharp U-turn with the association issuing a statement saying Chris Hilton's job uh, was secured and uh, he released his squad uh, thereon. But then there were also reports that Chris Hilton's um, performances were under scrutiny and the FA had given him a too much ultimatum uh, that's the match against Madagascar and Comoros to win or get his job uh, or get him relieved of the job. So basically, that was the latest tweet that Chris Hilton, despite having been given a reprieve, he was to win those two games or perform um, impressively to have his job secured. But then on the basis of uh, those two games, you cannot say that Chris Hilton will have any justification to defend his job. The game against Madagascar was awful. The game against Comoros was disappointing. So based on that, you cannot say that he has envisaged any features of uh, good performances or a quality of uh, performance that can, can be a defense for him if the GFA would want to sack him. I understand a lot of Ghanaians are also not happy uh, with the two games. So definitely, based on that, you would want to say Chris Hilton's job is on the line. And uh, we have put together some coaches on the market, some coaches who may be available uh, once the Black Stars would want to go to the market. And this time, maybe quite exceptionally, a coach who will fit the profile of the team, a coach who will come in and uh, understand the culture of the team and a playing philosophy that is best suited to the national team of Ghana. And the first name that comes to the lips is Tom Sanfiet. He's a Belgian. And those of you who follow African football will quiet, uh, know him for some time, for almost 20 years, has been in and out of Africa. He's coached in so many countries and clubs, including Salitas of Burkina Faso. He's coached the Zimbabwe national team at a point. He's coached uh, clubs in Togo, Ethiopia national team. And he went to Gambia. And this is where he did the magic, becoming the lowest ranked team on the continent to qualify for the AFCON in Cameroon after so many years of the Gambia uh, making an attempt to qualify. So Tom Sanfiet led them to the AFCON as the lowest ranked team. And at the end there, he impressed massively at the AFCON. Uh, Tom Sanfiet led Gambia to the quarterfinal stage only to be undone by the host nation Cameroon. So uh, based on that, you would want to think that Tom Sanfiet, with his playing style, uh, he is well noted for the 4 2 3 1 formation and a very progressive coach, very attacking minded. He's a coach who comes to mind. And his salary is within the range of uh, 30000 to 50000 uh, He's also been eyeing the Black Star job for quite some time. And I believe that he is a coach who will come to mind when the Ghana Football Association goes to the markets for a coach, uh, a high-profile coach. Then the next coach that I'll come to uh, is definitely Vahid Halihozic. Uh, Vahid Halihozic is a Bosnian and Herzegovina. He's a person who has been in Africa for some time. He coached the Algerian national team, wasn't too successful. Uh, he came back and then uh, to other national teams on the continent. He's uh, gone to Lille in France. He's coached at Stade de Rene. Uh, he was formerly at Dynamo Zagreb and then Ivory Coast national team. He led the Japanese national team for some time before coming to Morocco. Uh, he replaced uh, Alvi Renard when he left the Moroccan national team. Definitely he knows the continent and at 71, may not be well suited for the intricacies of the Black Stars, especially at a time when, that the pressure is so much on any coach that comes to the national team. But we believe that uh, coach Vahid Haliwazic, currently unattached, may come to mind or may want to apply when the Black Star job uh, is advertised. Then we come to our own man, Kwesi Apia. We understand that he signed a contract, we all know, that he's led the Sudanese national team to four points in the current World Cup qualifying campaign. Sudan are playing away from home due to the political turmoil in the country. But Kwesi Apia has won, has achieved a massive victory against DR Congo, the first of its kind that the Sudanese national team has had over their Congolese counterparts. And he also drew at home. Um, so it, it tells you that Kwesi Apia has started on a very good note. But he's noted particularly for grooming talents, 
no coach in the last few years has come to the national team of Ghana and made the sort of impact in terms of recruiting quality players for the national team like Kwesi Apia has done. Obi Enim, players are the Omoba national team. Majority of them have gone on to become hits, uh, instant hits. I don't need to mention names, but Kwesi Apia is noted for bringing young players and his vision of giving them opportunity has well inured to the benefit of Ghana, even in his absence. He's qualified the national team uh, of Ghana for the World Cup, the first uh, local coach to do that. Uh, it will be his third stint if he gets the job again. And I know that Kwesi Apia will always want to serve Ghana. Now he has a contract to Sudan, makes it quite difficult and complicated. But he's a coach who will definitely come to mind if Ghana goes to the market to look for a new coach. Let me go to another option. And this is a, a, I mean, a guy who everybody knows for his uh, performance with the Black Stars. Mike Elysian has had his coaching badges. Uh, you may well not know what his current coaching badges is or what he's chasing currently, but he's been with North Zealand, where players like Kamal Din, Enes Nyama, Kutuz Mohamed, Basset, Ibrahim, and all those players who are touted to be the next generation of the Black Stars have come from. So it's not difficult. Michael Asian was in the same line with Didi Dramani, also from North Zealand and Right to Dream. Asian understands the complexities of playing for the Black Stars. Asian has had his coaching badges. He's played to the highest level in world football, gone to the World Cup twice, AFCON a couple of times, and of course, knows the ins and outs of the Ghana national team. Wouldn't it be quite special and uh, maybe out of the order if Michael Essien is given the chance to coach the national team for what is known? He's not had any coaching credentials yet, talking about top coaching credentials, but if Otuado was given the mantle, I'm sure that Michael Essien will, will come in as a person who is best suited and fit for the national team at this point. He's a former Ghana international and he will attract a lot of um, attention. And maybe his interest in revolution and rebranding of Ghana football will lead us somewhere, just maybe, possibly, somebody we may want to look up to. So Michael Asian also comes to this and his salary range uh, will be around uh, 50,000 to 60,000 or possibly below that uh, because there will be his first time off uh, coaching at the highest level. Would you fancy a Michael Asian at the Black Stars? Well, uh, the guess is as good as mine. Let me come to a very interesting pick that I made. Graham Porter, the English manager uh, who was uh, once coach of Chelsea or recently coached Chelsea, uh, his salary range will definitely shoot up to around uh, eighty to hundred thousand uh, dollars per month if only the Ghana Football Association and the ministry will be willing to foot that. He's currently unattached. He was sacked by Chelsea last year, September. And uh, Porter made a name for himself after gaining uh, three promotions and league caps in Sweden uh, with Asta Sands FK uh, before coming to the Europa League knockout stage. He was appointed as coach of Swansea and then came to Brighton where he made a name for himself. Uh, we all understand and we know how he revolutionized the... Uh, 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 the Brighton and Hove Albion team. And his revolution is always about having players uh, who are pragmatic and also young players to run their hearts out on the field. I believe that uh, in terms of uh, coaching, he may not have the, the profile to coach a national team. But of course, if you want a high profile coach uh, at that side, Graham Porter is unattached. So Graham Porter may be an option. Uh, if uh, the Ghana Football Association goes to the market. That's what we think. And I come to a very interesting choice again. This time, Antonio Conte. Everybody would want, but uh, how many of us are going to get? Antonio Conte is a top-notch coach. He's had his, his, his stint with a lot of clubs. He's coached the Italian national team, coached Juventus, coached Chelsea, Tottenham Hospice, Inter Milan, and so many clubs in Italy as well. He's won trophies. He's a winner. And uh, getting him will be very difficult, but he will be an ultimate choice. Uh, if Ghana thinks that we need a high-profile coach, Antonio Conte is currently unattached. And uh, his preferred 3-5-2 formation may well suit 
the national team and the style, uh, progressive style of play, possessive that we want. So Antonio Conte, 54 years, uh, he's had everything in, in terms of football. And I believe that if you say you want a top coach uh, in world football to lead your national team, you really want to go past Antonio Conte. So if you have money, uh, who is Ika, Beje, it's about money. Antonio Quinte is on the market. You may want to go to uh, speak to him. The Ministry of Sports uh, would want to convince government that let's go for Antonio Quinte. He'll be the biggest coach uh, perhaps on the continent and that will also raise the profile of your national team. So are we going for Conte or we can't? Well, let's go to another choice. Also a big name and a World Cup winner for that matter. Joachim Love is a coach that we all know won the World Cup with Germany in Brazil. Joachim Lowe is 63 years, and he's also known for his progressive and attacking style of football. A no-nonsense manager, 433 formation and 4231 is um, his suitable pattern of play. His salary will break a neck. Definitely difficult for a nation like Ghana to pay. But Yigaya Numusi a top coach. Joachim Lowe is currently unattached and his salary is within the range of $150,000 to $200,000 a month if we can pay. But he's there, very experienced, plays the progressive style of football that we all desire. Are we going for Joachim Love? Is it possible? Can we pay? These are questions that we need to ask ourselves. I will also uh, go back to Germany. There is Hansi Flick, who is also unattached, the former Bayern Munich manager. He won the treble with Bayern and he was an assistant to Joachim Lowe when they won the World Cup. So also knows how to, I mean, win. Flick is very notable for scoring a lot of goals, something the Black Stars have lagged in some time now. Are we capable of breaking the bank to go for Hansi Flick? He's unattached. And you say you want a top-notch coach to instill discipline. When you want to discipline and you talk about discipline, you don't go past Germany and, of course, the Bavaria people. So let me, let me want to point out that Hansi Flick is available on the market. Are you picking him ahead of Conte or Joachim Love? if you have the opportunity of naming the next Black Stars coach? Julen Lopetegui, this guy has been in Spain out, very controversial, but he's, he's the guy that a lot of players fear when you talk about disciplinarians. We understand his controversial announcement um, of Real Madrid ahead of the 2018 World Cup when he was announced by Real Madrid, even before he went to the World Cup. He since coached teams like um, Sevilla and Wolverhampton Wanderers. He's won so many titles in world football, plays the attractive kind of football that you want. He's a top coach. So if you want a top coach to lead the national team and you are tired of the Matrai, Marque, Julian Lopetegui, the former Spain uh, coach is on the market for grabs. If you can go for him, let me come to this guy. Ralph Hassenhattel is a personal choice. Ralph uh, is 56 years. He's from Austria. He's coached in Germany, notably with um, RB Leipzig, where he made an impact in the league and Champions League. He left them to join the Premier League side, uh, Southampton. We all remember he's, uh, I mean, very limited in spending. When you, you sign a coach like that, and with a national team like Ghana, he makes do with the materials available. And I think that if we say we want a top coach who fits our profile, whatever the profile is, then Ralph Hassan Hartel is available on the market. Uh, man management is superb. Let's see how it goes for us. Then the coach that Ghanaians have desired for such a long time, currently in France with the women's national team, led them to the World Cup our own man, whether he's a Ghanaian or not, Hervé Renard, the Fox. The Fox was in Ghana with Claude Leroy in 2008. We said he was a PE teacher. We didn't want him. He was nearly the Black Stars coach after Claude Leroy left. We said he was a PE teacher. We didn't want a PE teacher. We don't know his credentials. Went to Gambia. He went to Zambia, won the AFCON, came to Morocco, made a name, came to Ivory Coast, won the AFCON against Ghana. Uh, in Equatoria Guinea, he's done so much on the continent, gone to Saudi Arabia, beat Argentina, the eventual World Cup winners. We don't need to, do we need to say, I mean, a lot about uh, Verena? Not really. Everyone knows him. And he's the coach that we have all desired. Our ex, 
who is still haunting us on every occasion. Are we breaking the bank to pay $200,000 or $150,000 for that matter to go for Hervé Renard? These are coaches who are available, 10 or 11 of them. There are a couple of local coaches that we would also want to uh, make decisions on whether getting them as backroom staff. Uh, there is Ibrahim Tanko around, there's Frimpo Manso around, there is Prosper Ogum around, there is uh, Samuel Bodu around. These are all local coaches. But this, to me, are uh, some of the coaches that if we say we want to go in for a top, top coach to lead the Black Stars or a coach who is best suited to the profile of the national team and the status, who is your choice from the, uh, I mean, above mentioned or the aforementioned coaches? in this episode. Let me hear you in the comment section. Let's point out what the wrongs are with the national team and what the rights are. But which of these coaches are you going to go in for if you had the power to choose the next Black Stars coach in case, just in case, Chris Hilton is relieved of his job. Thank you.